So I think there's a few different ways of approaching it. There's the altruistic way, what's best for your patient. And we have now a number of data sets out there that support that getting people off of medications is better for their IOP diurnal curves, better for their quality of life, getting them off of surface issues that we face with topical drops as well. But I think there's other secondary benefits too that can help the staff, like we talked about with time and effort, efficiency and flow, but also quality of vision afterwards. I used to think, okay, I have a cataract patient who happens to have glaucoma, but I'm focused on the cataract. It's reversed now for me, philosophically. I have a glaucoma patient who happens to have a cataract, and the cataract is my excuse to go in there to take care of the glaucoma. Yeah. That is a mental shift. And that's confess that's the truth for me to... It's exactly right. And that's just, it sounds so simplistic about it. If you have that attitude of like, this is a glaucoma patient, I'm going to cataract surgery, I can't ignore the glaucoma. And if I have these amazing tools, whether it's canal plastic or other mixed procedures, why not do that? And okay, the extra time. I will say, comparing stenting and, and, I, and you know, the canal plastic with the eye track advanced, I hate to compare, I don't like a big fan of comparing because every situation is different, no doubt every patient is different, but I will say with the advanced, the new advanced technology, I would say, I'll be honest, if you look at my videos, very little difference in time. So if you're comparing stenting versus canaloplasty, I think the canaloplasty is very efficient, very efficient, you know exactly where you are, versus with stenting, you can sometimes play stents in places that aren't really supposed to be there. So yes, you can be quick with your stenting, whatever you do, but are you really doing the right thing for the patient? Just placing it in the scleral spur sometimes, and I've done that. Yep. There's a canal plastic, Everyone. you know exactly where you are, especially with the eye track. I think one of the best opportunities is, is when we're doing cataract surgery, because you know we're already going into the eye, so that relative concern about risk kind of drops a lot. And then it's more a matter of saying, well, we're doing something additional to the cataract, you know, uh, you know very, very low additional risk, and with an incremental benefit in terms of less medications, you know, improved, uh, you know, IP control, quality of life, you know, and ultimately, I believe also that we're, we're actually rejuvenating the system. We're actually changing something on a tissue level to enhance aqueous outflow right. um, that may potentially delay the trabecular disease because the glaucoma is not just optic neuropathy. I mean, of course, we define it by that, but glaucoma is very much a trabeculopathy. Right. which progresses from, you know, from reversible to irreversible because of, you know, accumulation of, uh, you know, extracellular matrix, inflammation, fibrosis, everything. And, and maybe the idea here is that we can actually rejuvenate that to kind of take it a few steps back. So therefore, maybe that progression of trabecular disease may actually reduce and the outflow downstream may be preserved. So that's, I know it's a theoretical benefit, but, you know, I think there is some basic science to support that idea. And yeah. it gives one additional rationale to think about why it's important to get into that system sooner than later. So before I do the cataract, I like to approach the angle. I use less overall OVD, uh, so I'm, I'm wasting less supplies and materials to, to maintain the chamber. I have a clearer view, and I know that I'm getting my glaucoma treatment and management in regardless of what happens in the cataract surgery. It's actually very efficient. It plays quite nicely. I make my two incisions. I go ahead and approach the angle. Afterwards, I continue on with my rexus and complete the cataract surgery. So it can be very efficient. Now the next part, why wouldn't I just put in a stent? It takes um, you know less time. I, I think it's actually quite comparable. I mean, the, the time to do them and do them properly takes about the same amount of time. Most of my patients are mild to moderate glaucoma. So for me, I always like to start less invasive to more invasive. And so for me, tissue sparing is really where I'm starting. And that's where canaloplasty is a great starting point. So tissue sparing, and then maybe I'll look at doing a stent next or in addition to, but I don't necessarily think it's an either or sort of thing. And while most stents are tissue sparing, uh, it is a hardware that is left behind. And so it's the fact that canaloplasty is implant free and tissue sparing really kind of seals the deal for me in my mild patients. Now, like I said, I will couple a stent in there and especially as we move into more moderate uh, patients, I, I think that's important, but yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, I don't think they're mutually exclusive. 